and uh, we are still living under those conditions to get the food to get the food because the the restaurant was full also so we will then be to grow in this area will bring about investment and economic opportunities for the people of the four districts which is OR Tambo, Alfredo, Ogo and Herikwara districts. Developing this targeted area will offer South Africa an opportunity to be bold and innovative whilst providing political leadership and hopes to the impoverished and marginalized masses that are looking forward to this gathering. The de development will also assist in addressing the negative the negative legacy of apartheid uh, special path and could address current migration patterns which have seen the area as a major sending area to provinces like the Northwest, Gauteng, Limpombo, Western Cape, and KZN. The area is also strategically located almost at the center of a 600 kilometer coastal line stretch between Buffalo City and the Teguini Metro. However, very little by way of infrastructure investment has gone into this area. Thus, the current end to Wild Coast Highway Road development in Bondoland, which is where we are, is seen not only as a major road, but as a catalyst for other forms of socioeconomic development in this region, which can also link to be linked to the rail and maritime development plan. This area is also an endless opportunity with prime time and warm coastal as well as uncharted waterways that are also fed by the abundant underground water. So the proposed African coastal smart city intersect with the Wild Coast Corridor of the Eastern Cape province which cuts across three districts, Alfred Zoo, or Tambo and Amatole. And to that effect, a Wild Coast Regional Spatial Development Framework was developed by our province, Eastern Cape, way back in 2014. These priority notes that were earmarked as part of the Wild Coast Corridor Development are Coffee Bay, Port St. John's, Mbojim, Sigaba, Mnyameni, and Mzamba. And various initiatives by the Eastern Cape Provincial Government are underway in the Wild Coast Corridor and they include the well end to Wild Coast Road and project preparation for the maritime Talipia industry and the Mark Wamajola Ecotourism Initiative and Port St. John's Town Development and the Wild Coast SEZ. So the Eastern Cape Province resolved to mobilize all spheres of government to join hands in the development of Port St. John's. And therefore the African Coastal Smart City vision and plan is in full alignment, Honorable Minister, with the vision of the Eastern Cape Provincial Government to prioritize development in the Wild Coast and adjacent areas. And therefore, we fully support the broad Eastern Cape Seaboard development as the Eastern Cape Government. We will join hands with other spheres of government under your leadership, uh, Honorable Minister, to ensure that these plans are realized. We will work together with traditional leaders and their communities and the private sector in working towards the realization of the vision of this coastal smart city. We are looking forward to working in partnership with private sector in realizing this vision. With those few words, well, you are welcome to this session. Feel free to engage and provide your inputs when you are invited to do so. This session represents one many that will take place as we see you, we see our partners. You are welcome and thanks very much. I don't know what happened to the lady who's doing sanitizing. Yeah. that arrangement can be done for the lady to come back or the, any path. Minister, the floor is yours. And after the minister will then be showing a video before the provinces uh, present because the last time when we postponed Port St. John's, 
Swan John, you were supposed to have gone there. It rained heavily and we could not go. So we will be bringing it to you uh, in a video and which is presenting the Coastal Minister. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, DM. Let me greet all of you, the government MSCs who are here from the Eastern Cape and KZN, all the officials, but more importantly this time, I'd like to greet all the business people and potential investors. We are very welcome to this great place, which was once a frontier of pitch battles during the colonial days, uh, led by the, amongst them was the Pondo Revolt. This area is called Pondoland. But this whole area where we are, including the neighboring, are also birthplaces for great heroes. In the next district from here, that's where our icon, Tata Mandela, was born. Where we are, that's where Oar Tambo was born. Uh, our freedom fighter, Mamui Nima Tigizela Mandela, was born in this one. And this municipality is named after her. So <clears throat> then if you go to Herikwala, we have people like Herikwala is a great freedom fighter also. There is a, it's a birthplace also of Stephen Lamini. This, this district is named after Alfred Nzo, the municipality after Winnie. Alfred Nzo was one of our secretaries general of the African National Congress during the struggle days. So you can see we are in a place of heroes and heroines. But the greatest challenge, as has been said before, this is one of the poorest areas in our country. It's part of the 10 poorest districts. It, so that's a big challenge. And that happens within an economy that hasn't been really growing. And COVID has made that even worse. The challenge of poverty that has deepened with COVID Unemployment has increased with COVID. Inequality has also increased with COVID. But as they say, every dark cloud is a silver lining. So we have decided that we should use this as a silver lining and start developing these four districts, Oar Tambo, Alfred Nzo, Ugu, and Herikwala. They are very interrelated, these four districts. You can't really develop one without the other. We can all share and participate in building. So basically we're asking all of you to share in this dream but not only share in it, but participate in building. So we see this area and this seaboard as an important locomotive towards the economic growth and economic recovery of our country. And the three key drivers or economic anchors that we see 
There'll be many more, and I'm sure in your discussion you'll bring many more, but I'll mention a few. Of course, because of the beauty of this place, I mean, it's got breathtaking landscapes. It's got the most beautiful shoreline. It's, it's got beautiful flora and fauna. In fact, it's a mega diversity area. So we think tourism can be a big anchor. Not only tourism in terms of the landscape and the sea, but also cultural heritage, because there's lots of cultural heritage in this area, floating tourism and so on, and other types of tourism. The ocean is a big economic frontier, and we have not really developed it to its full potential. In the eastern side, we don't even have a big fisheries. We don't have fishing companies. We export and import our goods, and they travel through the maritime highways, but we don't have ships that are built by us or that we so we'd like to work with the training colleges, institutions, with the uh, business sitters. We'd like with, to work with all of you to develop these skills uh, so that the young people participate fully in what is going to happen. So we'd like really you to support us in this effort and make this coastal city a reality. And we want it to be alive. We don't want it to sleep at five. We want it to be a city that's alive almost 24 hours. We want to be a city that is safe, especially for women and children. Because if it's safe for women and children, it will be safe for everyone. We like it to be a city that is connected. So eventually, we hope it will be one city. Initially, it will be a multinodal, polycentric. But as it develops, it probably will be connected and become one city. So we want you to really work with us. We want it to also have an, a character of the country, the heritage, the culture, and so the way we design it uh, should also have an identity of this country. We also want to see equity. It shouldn't be a city where there is obscene opulence or be uh, some kind of equity. And of course, cities that do not have huge inequalities
Our apology on that, they say the internet is a bit low in terms of bandwidth, and that is why the voice is not coming out. It's not the quality, but it's the connectivity issues and challenges in the area. So what they will then do, they will download it proper, and then they will play it later uh, before we, we end the meeting. So I apology on that one. So the technicians will be working on it and then get it around. They say when it's downloaded, it will, it will then be a better version than what we're seeing now. So could we therefore then agree that we continue with the agenda and invite the presentations of investment opportunities in the districts to be led by the provincial COCTA, the office of the Premier's Eastern Cape and Guazulu Natal, and then they will then be uh, taking in that order to say these are the opportunities for all of you as investors, as businesses. And after that presentation, we'll then be inviting the businesses in the order that I'm going to be reading for them to also present on their wish list or what they are seeing are investments. The MEC for Cocta in KwaZulu Natal, uh, Honorable C. Poto Muga, will then be the one leading the delegation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, DM, uh, who is our facilitator, <coughs> want to extend our greetings to <coughs> uh, Minister uh, Mama Dr. Nkosazan Zamini Zuma. Uh, greetings to MEC from uh, Eastern Cape and MEC from Guazulu uh, Natal, DGs present here from different departments, the DGs, all senior officials present, uh, business people. We also want to greet uh, Mama, the local municipality which was uh, named by the uh, fighter Mama Wini Matigizela uh, Mandela. I think it's important to greet the municipality irrespective of the challenges of there is no leadership because we are aware that we are in the process of establishing uh, all council across the country. But it is important to indicate that. <coughs> uh, program director or facilitator, I will be failing my responsibility as a leader on my own <coughs> to not raise what I have been observing in this meeting. Because it's important that wherever we go, we always observe the protocol. I must say, uh, facilitator, I've been sitting and observing. Now I'm worried that what is happening today, it might happen tomorrow, where the president will be meeting with all stakeholders. <clears throat> Part of the protocol that one has been schooled or is school of thought, but it's part of organizational culture. We know that we are coming from different culture, but when you join a government or any other institution, there is something called say, organizational uh, a culture. It is wrong when the minister standing, coming to a podium, and we sit down. And if I'm not raising that, I will be failing my responsibility. It's worse, <clears throat> even officials from government, when the ministers stand, they are sitting down. It's a disrespect. I must say it. I'm sorry to start at that tone, but I will be failing my responsibility because today I might be, it's not because it's Mamankosa Zanezamini Zuma any other leader that is senior in government, you have a responsibility to observe an office. You might not uh, respect a person, but you have a responsibility to observe the office. 
I think it's important that let me let, let me raise that because uh, part of the things that Umakumalo, uh, my mother, taught me is to talk what I want to say at any time, as long as that truth is going to assist. <clears throat> so that's why I'm raising it here. I, 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 you might have a discomfort with it. I'm sorry, Minister, to raise it uh, the way I'm raising it. We have never sent me uh, to say whatever. I, I normally speak what I want to say because if we are doing that, that means we are disrespecting the government as a whole because the minister is here to represent government. And I'm worried because tomorrow the president is coming and we might continue with this what we have, what, what, what we have done. When the president comes to the podium and will sit down and relax and it's like we are jubilating, we are fine, we are happy, uh, everything is normal. I think it is important, uh, 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 facilitator. I want to apologize for starting at that, but <clears throat> hence I have already indicated that I will be failing my responsibility to do that. And we have seen it before. For sure, there's no one that has seen what a culture of special of government. I don't want to talk about other cultures because for sure we are coming from different of, of thoughts. But when we are called by government, <clears throat> we need to respect uh, that protocol. First, I haven't said that. Uh, I'm here to introduce a topic or a presentation. <clears throat> As you already see it, it's an overview of economic development priorities. We have a, of, we have a plan for the whole understand that whatever that we are going to present here is not just with just TAMSAC. They are processes that were followed to ensure that we deal with the development in our province, but for our people. Because whatever that we do, we are not doing it for ourselves, but we are doing it for our people. And part of the plans, we are also going to talk about the N2 corridor plans, because as I already indicated, that our plans of coastal is come, they start from Uku, if we are starting from Wazulu Natal until Richards Bay, which is King Tejuayo. But because we are dealing with uh, engagement with Eastern Cape, then we are only focused on that. But there is an end to corridor, a plan that we are going to talk to it. And also the auction economy plan. And our o o o o <coughs> ocean, o ocean a a a corridor a a plan, I think, and let me, not, let me not go into details, but I think it's important that I also indicate. But lastly, we are also going to demonstrate the district development uh, model that the minister spoke about. District development model does not only talk about spheres of government. We know all spheres of, we know all three spheres of government. But the DTM also speaks about working with stakeholders, which business people as they are here, they are part of stakeholders. That's why early also we have a traditional leaders who also participated in this uh, a development that the minister have already has, uh, has spoken about. Uh, I will then, uh, facilitate with your permission, uh, request that the team uh, led by Titi, Jim Cucini, uh, this, this presentation is not a presentation for COCTA, it's a provincial uh, government uh, presentation, which we, 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 we did as a, as a, as a, as a, gov as a provincial government. And then, Titi, uh, you can come and take, uh, as, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable MSC. Uh, may you allow me to take off my mic program direct, my mask program director. I think I'm far from, from you and from our guests. Um, 
I do uh, acknowledge that we need to keep our masks on all the time. Um, Honorable Minister, the Deputy Ministers are present, MECs for KZN and the Eastern Cape, uh, our Honorable MEC for COCTA and MEC for Economic Development, who are also the, the members of the economic cluster. Amakosa uh, Sondlungulu, the DGs present, the Minister's advisors, HODs, uh, CEOs, uh, DDGs, the municipal managers that are present, uh, the chambers, and our special guests, the business community, and the potential investors, all officials present, all protocol observed. Uh, my name is Barbara Mugujini. I'm the DDG for development and planning within KZ10 COCTA, uh, responsible for issues of economic development, uh, disaster management, municipal planning, as well as uh, municipal infrastructure. I've been uh, requested by my Honorable MEC and the Chair of the Economic Cluster to do this presentation on behalf of the Economic Cluster. So it's not a COCTA presentation, but it's a presentation representing the Economic Cluster chaired by MEC Rave Pile with the MEC for COCTA as a key member. Um, the um, topic that we are going to be presenting on is the investment opportunities in the two districts of Ugu and Herigwala that are the key anchors for the development that has been unveiled by our Honourable uh, Minister. Um, in terms of the presentation outline, we're going to be talking about the background, about the strategic planning profile, the Ugu economic opportunities as well as the Herigwala economic opportunities. I'm not going to go through what the minister has already outlined in terms of the, uh, the speech by the uh, presidency, by the president, his excellency, in, the, in his uh, February 2021 State of the Nation address. It was clear, the mandate was outlined that we need uh, to develop new cities. We need to also look at smart cities, and Lanceria was mentioned and outlined at that point as one of the key, key developments that we'll be overseeing. But in terms of uh, KZ10 and the Eastern Cape, it was clear the coastal corridor was identified as an African coastal city and the corridor that we need to focus on in terms of development. Fortunately, as KZN, we had already conceptualized a number of activities around that corridor, but that smartness, we had not thought about it. And we are glad that the, the, the president, as well as the minister for COCTA, then an area that we need to look at. Around agriculture, there is also a vast array of farming activities and opportunities in forestry, in the sugar cane, in fruits, um, of late is the macadamia, the essential oils. Uh, the investors are well versed with, 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 what, with what I'm presenting, and they are also uh, key in some of the activities that we've been undertaking, uh, especially within the Ugu district um, a, 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 through the development agency. You can see already as KZN that primary route is defined and we are ready to move in terms of supporting this particular corridor. And we are saying there are many challenges and issues that we need to address, but there are also opportunities that are being presented uh, through this corridor. We have defined the nodes, the key nodes within this corridor. Uh, of course, uh, Port Shepstone is the, is, the, is the anchor node, but over and above that, we've got key nodes such as your Kokstad, uh, your Harding towns, and we've got a number of small towns that are rural, but they've got a potential that we now need to unlock through the smart city uh, development program that we are now embarking on. We also have uh, limited capital resources as a challenge within this particular corridor, hence the need to partner with private sector, the need to work closely with the private sector to untap uh, those opportunities that the private sector is aware of, and as government we cannot fund or we cannot uh, resource. There is also a sl slow rate of spatial transformation and uh, require that focused attention to uh, promote equity, especially in terms of um, the, the settlements that we have. We have uh, mi mi migration patterns, and as uh, Port Shepstone, we are seeing a lot of um, in-migration from other towns because Port Shepstone is developed, and we are saying let's develop the small towns around uh, Port Shepstone 
as part of the small town rehabilitation program uh, to ensure that we don't uh, over exert pressure on uh, the Port Shepson area, which would then lead to other challenges that we currently face in terms of um, uh, the infrastructure that is overstretched. The opportunities, the network of cities, uh, of the small settlements, we also have um, uh, cost-effective service delivery due to the concentration of people and infrastructure, and we need to work around that, and the coordination points are already there, and we now have the opportunity in terms of the DDM program that is underway, and we now can work collectively and develop the area as a collective, as one government, um, in line with the, with the concept. Uh, in, in terms of the small towns that we have within this region, there are a number of social economic issues that we need to address. They are outlined there. We also have special issues that we need to address. And we are saying as the revitalization of these small towns take place, we need therefore to look at this, the, the smart concept and the Africanness that, we've, uh, be, that we now have in the new concept that is underway. I will not go through all these key challenges. They are, the documents will be circulated uh, for, your, for your reading, but I need to then zoom into the, the, the priority economic development uh, strategy, which is the PSEDS and the nodes that we've outlined. You can see from the map that uh, we've got um, agriculture, but we also have the strategic nodes in terms of uh, tourism. And uh, for, the, for the area in question, if we look at um, the, the Creighton area, the Umzimkulu, the St. Faith's, we've got those small towns that we are saying they have a potential, and we now need to look at those to, to outline uh, their competitiveness. ETIA, uh, through, through the economic cluster, has also done what is called the District Comparative uh, Report, uh, where they've uh, out looked, looked at the opportunities that are there within these small towns, and that document is there, it's available, and it will also outline some of the opportunities that are untapped that we have within the province. Zooming into Ugu, which is made up of Renkonyeni, Umzumbe, Umzuabantu, as the, and, as the, as the municipalities, we are, we are looking at the um, opportunities, especially in terms of um, uh, the urban development that, has already, that is already in place. Uh, Port Shepstone, I've highlighted, is the anchor, anchor, anchor node, and it's also got a potential uh, which is high in terms of uh, the retail sector, the tourism sector. And in terms of this special, the special features that we have, agriculture um, is the key activity confined along the coastal strip and also in the inland area of uh, Umzinto and Port Shepstone in the Oribi Flats. And this area is dominated by your sugar cane, your timber, and I, 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 as well as uh, around uh, bananas and nuts. As we're driving along this uh, route, I'm sure you saw the plantations for bananas, and you also saw, you, you, you may have seen the macadamia nuts that are already dominating the area, and we now need to develop processing plants in terms of uh, processing the agriculture produce that we have. Instead of exporting uh, raw, the, the raw products, we now need to look at agri-processing as an opportunity that exists. The forestry plant plantations that are there, they dominate the western parts of the municipality, and there is also uh, the bulk of population which is in the rural inland where there is limited development and which we, these are the areas where we need to provide the basic services uh, to ensure the rural nodes that are underdeveloped at, uh, uh, receive attention. Uh, in terms of the um, locational advantages for Ugu, it borders with the Eastern Cape. It is a potential gateway to the Eastern Cape and also obviously in towards, uh, uh, towards Etewini and uh, our, our ports. It's a, it, it provides the integration with the South Basin, the South, uh, the South Deben Basin, which is an area of industrial activity, and there are many op economic opportunities that are presented in that vicinity. And again, we're looking at the natural geographic advantages in this area, the subtropical climate, which is uh, proving to be uh, a positive development for agriculture. And we're also looking at the beaches that the minister outlined, uh, the blue flag beaches that we have. We do understand some of the challenges with the blue flag status in these areas that we'll be looking at moving forward. Um, in terms of infrastructure and resource advantages, is the N2 highway and also the, 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 the issues around uh, the good quality limestone within the district. 
which then becomes um, uh, a major activity in terms of the quarries that we have in the Oribi uh, Gorge area. Uh, in terms of the gross value added shares, uh, you can see the percentage uh, of the GVA for Ugu, uh, where we are indicating as an example, the top uh, is the general government, its contribution towards the, the, the gross value added. Um, and again, you can see there is potential in terms of finance, there is potential in terms of the transport sector, the wholesale and retail, which is uh, growing, as well as the construction set sector, electricity, gas and water, as well as uh, manufacturing. The contribution to, to the provincial GVA is also quite high for the Ugu district, and it's, we have untapped opportunities that we also need to look at. Um, in terms of the, the, the sectoral advantages, we are looking at the issues around the stability, uh, the existing or the stable um, sectors, which is forestry and timber, and also the hospitality and tourism. As much as it is impacted by the issues of water and COVID, it's areas that we need to now put emphasis on as we move forward. The issues around um, agriculture, hunting, and quarry for the province, and that water master plan also zooms into the areas of Ugu and Erigwala, uh, where we are saying we need to ensure water security uh, by developing the, 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 the water resources within the area. We are working closely with DWS on this initiative as well as MISA, and uh, we, we should be seeing the results of the hard work as we move forward through the implementation of this um, smart city program. We are also going to be lobbying for the augmentation of uh, the water resources, as well as seeking more support in terms of developing our airports and the rehabilitation of the key strategic infrastructure, including the maintenance of the infrastructure that we have. Um, again, in terms of cat catalytic projects that have been identified, we've got short to medium term initiatives that are outlined, and these are already um, underway with potential investors that have expressed an interest. I will not go through the catalytic opportunities. These are there within the uh, district growth and development plan as well as their, their strategy. For Herigwala, again, we've got a similar process where we've identified the locational advantages uh, around agriculture and around the gateway to Lesotho, as well as the na natural advantages um, within the district, including the agriculture and the uh, importance of the dairy industry within the um, Herigwala district that is still untapped and requires more investment. We are also working on um, identifying more opportunities, uh, especially informed by the sectoral contribution towards the gross value added, um, similar to the Ugu district. And uh, within the um, Herigwala district, they've also identified the economic challenges, and these are also part of the profiles that we've developed as uh, part of the DDM uh, one plans uh, for the district. Tourism, agri-processing, forestry, and wood products, the retail and trade, uh, those are some of the e economic um, activities. And there is more work that we need to, to do around Herigwala in terms of the opportunities that, can, that are still untapped that we need to work on within the particular district. Of course, water is also an issue, but uh, there, is, uh, there are dams that are being planned, and we are working closely with DWS again on the Stephen Lamini Dam that is currently underway. I need to indicate through ETIA, the, uh, the economic profiles are there for the whole province, but there we are zooming into the two uh, districts of Ugu and Herigwala, where we've outlined the opportunities and the proposed uh, one district, one product, that uh, the concept that is underway through the competitive advantages. Um, and again, for Ugu, it's food processing, and for Herigwala, dairy processing, and we've got work again with agriculture, where they've already identified uh, the key economic activities uh, for these particular regions. Uh, in closure, again, I need to indicate we've got strategies underway, the water master plan, the energy master plan, uh, the sanitation issues uh, to ensure we don't have sewer spillage, as well as the solid waste issues through MISA, as well as the small town revitalization program, the township and rural economy, and the localization strategy that we need to implement with the, with the private sector leading us uh, as a government. Uh, in, on that note, we've come to the end of the input from KZ10 covering the two districts of uh, Ugu and Herigwala. Thank you, Honorable Minister.
uh, program director or deputy minister, uh, honorable minister, uh, MECs, DGs, uh, HODs, uh, our investors and uh, members of the business community, uh, senior managers in government, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Mashuban Dixon Kwasi from the office of the Premier in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I'm standing in for the uh, Director General of the province, uh, Mr. Sogon. Uh, unfortunately, they were called uh, to a portfolio committee today uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Premier, uh, I think, uh, to, for the oversight function on the annual reports and uh, media financial uh, reports. Um, Without uh, uh, much ado, I'm going to run through what we have prepared as a province. We are informed by a number of uh, policy documents that we have developed as a province. One is the Provincial Development Plan, which outlines key priority areas for the province, but also has got eight apex indicators and we have uh, broken down those eight apex indicators to measure development in the province according to each district. Alfred Nzo and Oar Tambo in terms of those apex indicators are lower down in terms of ranking. In terms of human development they are lower down. Uh, in terms of the Gini coefficient in terms of measuring poverty, they are lower down. In terms of the contribution in the GDP, they are down there. In terms of the ability to attract investments, they are also lower down, and also in other uh, in a, a, a four uh, additional indicators. These two um, uh, districts, Owar Tambo and Alfred and so, are, are lower down there. So, uh, so this opportunity is also going to be responding to those challenges that we have identified uh, in the Provincial Development Plan. Two, we have uh, the Provincial Economic Development Strategy uh, that identified six uh, uh, priority areas. It's your auto uh, sector, which is a major sector in the Eastern Cape, but it's on the other side of the province. But the intention of the Eastern Cape is to diversify so we have identified the second area as uh, light manufacturing, which we also want to do, especially in the Wild Coast SZ. The third one is Ocean's Economy, uh, to take uh, uh, advantage of this 800 kilometer coastline in the Eastern Cape, and I think about 400 or 350 uh, uh, from Owar Tambo up to, up to this municipality. So it takes about 350 kilometers. So we want to take advantage of that, so the ocean's economy. We do have the master plan for that ocean's economy for the province. The tourism is another area. This part of the province is so dominant in terms of the tourism potential. So we do have the master plan also of the province uh, uh, to take care of that area. The other sector that uh, we have prioritized is the agro-industry. Given what uh, the MEC for Cogta, MEC Ngata, has spoken to when he was opening this session, um, uh, that uh, this part of the province has got that potential. We have got highest, uh, the, the highest rainfall is this side, suitable land, and the number of animals who are topping. We, we are topping in terms of uh, uh, cattle, we are topping in terms of sheep, we are talking in terms of uh, uh, goats. So hence, we have a focus on agro-industry, uh, which covers all this. When I talk to the Wild Coast SEZ, you will see what I'm talking about. Uh, it covers all, all those, uh, uh, those uh, areas. So, so we do have the special development framework also that is guiding us, uh, that we have developed, uh, that looks at the special development framework of the whole province. But given this initiative, we'll have to look at the special development framework of this area um, uh, 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 that we'll be developing uh, 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 as part of this, uh, this project. 
Here is what uh, the MSC has already spoken to, um, uh, the areas that we have identified. I'll be talking to uh, uh, these areas as I uh, move down the, 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 the presentation. The reason why we have picked this slide from the uh, previous slide that was presented, I think, by Mesa, is because of that side of the, of the slide because that site talks to all the opportunities of the Eastern Cape in terms of the plans that we have developed for ourselves, especially the economic development strategy as well as the provincial development plan and the Wild Coast, uh, as is a Wild Coast uh, development uh, strategy. We have that tourism potential that we want to unleash, the ocean's economy that we want to unleash. In terms of the fisheries, uh, we have 73 cooperatives, fishing cooperatives that have been given licenses uh, uh, by the Department of Environmental Affairs in December 2019 for 15 years, 15 year licenses. So we want to work very closely with those uh, uh, fishing co cooperatives. They represent about 1,350 fishing communities from Bizana up to Kokama, which is the last municipality. And I think uh, from uh, this part of the province, I think from the Kai River, Uzangeneno, uh, I think we have about 50 of those cooperatives, and the other 23 is on the other side, up to Kokama, that, that, that side. So we want to support uh, those uh, 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 fishing cooperatives as, as part of this. In terms of the Port uh, Harbor development, all these coastal municipalities have identified areas where they want uh, to, to develop the launching areas, uh, your small half, uh, uh, craft harbors, uh, where, uh, around which they can also develop as centers for, for tourism development, uh, uh, um, uh, residential uh, areas, and all, and, and all that. So um, uh, the Winnie Dixela Mandela municipality identified, I think, the Mtentu Mouth uh, for that. Uh, your, your Moza Hill identified uh, Port Grovna and then Port St. John's identified the Port St. John's for that development. And then Nyandeni municipality and the OR Tambo, it identified Mdumbi and, KS, and, and, and uh, 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 KSD identified Coffee Bay as, as part of those areas uh, for the development of these small craft harbors uh, at, at some point. Uh, so I'm saying uh, aquaculture is one of those areas. Uh, we, I'll talk to that, uh, oil and gas, on that one, we are banking on the oil and gas explorations that uh, uh, the national government has given to uh, various investors to explore uh, the opportunities for gas and also oil uh, in our coastline. So we stand to benefit from whatever discoveries that will come. As of now, the oil and gas initiatives are on the other side uh, of the province, uh, especially around uh, Yokoha, uh, IDZ, but we are saying with these uh, 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 current uh, explorations, we are likely to benefit out of that. I've spoken to agriculture on film and creative uh, 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 sector. Ports and Johns is currently being used by international film developers as we speak. And, and uh, there's a lot that we need to do there because some of them are saying what they are getting from the, from the Eastern Cape, they don't get anywhere else. But they don't pay for all that, but in other countries they do pay. So we so want to ensure that we develop that so that Ports and Jones, with that uh, scenario that attracts these film developers, who are able to ensure that uh, uh, that area uh, benefits uh, out of that. The air, rail, road, transport network, um, the MEC has uh, spoken to that. Uh, the Port St. John's has got the, the S-trip that can augment the, 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 the Mtata airport if it's developed with the development of the town as we have uh, uh, planned. The rail, uh, Transnet has committed to refurbish the rail between Blenny and Mtata as a way of connecting Nelson Mandela, they have already refurbished that one to Cook House and then to East London. Uh, they have just launched it last month. It's going to cut the time for, for, for the transportation of goods from Nelson Mandela to East London by half. 
And then it's also going to, to ensure that there is connection between Nelson Mandela, East London, and Umtata in terms of the movement of goods. So they are currently refurbishing that line between Bleni and Umtata. That is going to assist in terms of ensuring the connectivity uh, uh, across the province uh, in terms of uh, uh, the benefits for this area uh, that we are talking about. Uh, in terms of the rail road transport, already I'll be talking to that in terms of the initiatives that are already underway, uh, around which we are saying we are calling upon investors to think deeply on the opportunities that are presented uh, by the initiatives that I'm just going to flag uh, here. On the renewable energy, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that this matter has uh, arisen even in the previous uh, presentations. Renewable energy, especially wind turbines, you don't find them this side of the province. From Kai River, this side, where there is a better part of the communal land, you don't get any of those uh, wind farms. Those billions of investments are on the other side in the private land. There's still a need here to, on our side as government, especially Department of Land and uh, Land Reform, to find the best mechanism to sort out this land tenure heavily uh, that is making difficult to, to, for investors to start investing on the renewable energy in an area in a, uh, under communal land. So we need to ensure that that is unlocked uh, very soon so that we are able to spread that. A number of areas have been identified. Uh, I'll be talking to that. I think uh, this area, Yasem Bizana, as well as Matatiel have been identified as some of those areas uh, that, are, that have got uh, a potential on, on, on that one. Uh, these are the municipalities uh, that we're talking to, uh, Owar Tambo and uh, Alfred Nzo. These are, this is the Wild Coast SEZ. We have two SEZs in the province, Iskuha SEZ, East London um, uh, SEZ. But on this side of the province, we don't have an, an SZ. So we have put together a plan to develop that SZ, and DTIC has uh, already agreed that as of now, they have approved that uh, the initial parts of this SZ uh, should be the, the start as an industrial park, and as more investors come, and then it graduates uh, to a fully-fledged SZ with all the necessary incentives and funding. Uh, so. So it's going to be based uh, around the airport of Umtat, uh, focusing on the, especially on agro-processing and, and uh, packaging and uh, aggregation and, and all that. So it has got a great potential. A lot of work has been done. Uh, Kuha is uh, assisting us in terms of uh, leading the establishment of that, uh, of that SZ. Uh, these are the things that will be supporting that SZ around Umtat. That SZ is going to be covering Alfred Nzo, Owar Tambo, and parts of Amatol, uh, based on the work of on what you see there at Owar. They are very dominant in terms of cattle and maize. Uh, uh, in terms of the processing of that, we could use the uh, industrial uh, area in, in Owar, but it can also support that uh, uh, SZ uh, uh, around Umtat. Um, in uh, KSD, we have wool, maize, livestock, forestry, soybeans, and we have uh, uh, mapped what the potential of the various areas throughout the province that must support uh, that SEZ. Uh, this is the SEZ, this part. This, this, is the, this is the airport, this is the runway, I think the new runway, this is the old runway. Uh, this is the building, airport building. This is the, the air wing, which was used by the Air Force uh, during the Transkai government. Uh, but it forms part of the, of the, of the uh, 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 precinct of the airport. This is the part that we want to use as the, as, as the, for that SZ initially. But this is another piece of land that has been identified as well. There's also another piece of land at this site. There are other developments. So in essence, we are shifting that congestion as Mtata towards the airport. So we're more or less creating some kind of a town around, uh, around Mtata uh, through, 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 through this. So there are a lot of opportunities. Already 
there are about uh, there are about uh, five investors already that are indicating uh, uh, their interest, and they've started. One of them is uh, one that is going to be aggregating, uh, uh, packaging vegetables, fruit, and all that, and they are working with communities. That has got the great potential to assist communities to be the main suppliers of that raw material. Uh, and, and in the process, we can find a way of uh, also incorporating them in the whole value chain so that they don't just benefit on the primary uh, production, huh? uh, but they must also get into other lucrative uh, uh, parts of the value chain. Uh, the Wild Coast Telecoms, this in, is intention to ensure that that SEZ also contributes in terms of connecting this part of the province uh, in terms of the ICT connectivity. The government of the Eastern Cape is working on the broadband uh, connectivity, which is going to cover a number of government uh, 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 um, uh, uh, facilities throughout the, 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 the province. And in the process, ensure that uh, uh, all the towns uh, throughout the province, they benefit, especially this side of the province, where there are connectivity uh, 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 problems. So that SZ is also going to be contributing towards this uh, and, and, and lead us to, to this. And this is uh, likely to contribute a great deal in what we are currently uh, trying to do with the smart city. And these are the things uh, that we need to do smart in order to have uh, a, a smart city. The Mtendu and the Msikaba Bridge, these are the major bridges uh, that have already been started. Um, I think Msikaba has already been started. I think the uh, 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 Sandral was going to be awarding the N2L Coast, uh, I mean the, the other one, the Mtendu one. Um, they are already creating a lot of jobs here. Uh, the president uh, was, uh, was in this one, was in this one to assess the progress uh, of that construction or, or already. So these are the two, this one, these are the two mega bridges that are iconic, uh, especially in the southern, I think in the, in the southern hemisphere. One of them is the longest, as you can see in the pictorial uh, that I'll be showing. This is the Mtendu Bridge. This one has not been started yet. This is the uh, artistic impression here, you. But your honor, the landscape is exactly the landscape that you find there, Pine Tendu. That bridge is going to be like this when it is completed. And if you look from this part down there, it's amongst the tallest. But from this side to that side, I think it's about 1,3. Uh, it's 1,3 kilometers. Um, uh, so it's likely to be the, 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 the longest. Um, this is the second one, the Msikaba one. This one has already been started. The president was here uh, in one of these sites I think they were building this, they, are, they have started to build this part and then build that part and then do incremental launching, incremental launching and meet it halfway. Um, so we are, we are flagging this because we want investors to, to dream big with these two iconic bridges. What is it that we can do around these bridges uh, to stimulate uh, 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 development, especially tourism, uh, around these areas. These are the are going to be destination points uh, for a number of people, uh, not only within the country but even outside the country, given the way they have been designed. Um, the rural enterprise development. We have uh, this one is focusing on uh, uh, packaging uh, uh, the primary production. Uh, we have it here in this municipality. We have a red hub here, the Rural Enterprise Development Hub, which aggregates uh, uh, Umbona and other things and packages them. And uh, already, especially in that one, which is in Kandule, in KSD, already we are already selling uh, maize meal and uh, stamp and, uh, and all that. You, you get that from the, from the uh, shelves, Zgaspa, Air Boxer, and, and, and others, as we, as we speak. So we have started this. So in this area, we have two hubs, the one that is here in Bizana, as well as the other one that is in KSD in, in, in Mkandul. And this is the, what is happening as we speak in these uh, red hubs. And you can see that the job creation is taking place. 
those primary producers are benefiting out of this, but we need to go big on the primary producers to sustain these things. And we need investors as well to partner with these uh, cooperatives uh, to take this uh, forward and ensure that they are prof uh, um, uh, profitable and they are professionally, uh, professionally run. Uh, this is just the, the, the outlook of these uh, red hubs. I don't want to overgraze it. Fulindlela Industrial Park is in Umtata. Uh, we, have, we are resuscitating all industrial parks, but on this part of the, in these two district municipalities, this is the only industrial park that we have, um, uh, which was there in the, in the uh, erstwhile uh, 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 Transkei government. But it has since been dilapidated, but we are working on all of them to uh, develop those industrial parks. There's a lot of activity that is taking place there, and uh, these are the areas get, that we are saying uh, uh, investors can go and, uh, and uh, uh, find spots uh, in, those, uh, in those areas. This is uh, where it is um, uh, in, in Umtada. Uh, then Magwa Majola Agri and Ecotourism um, a, a, a project. On this one, we are combining two, the Magwa Tea Factory, as well as the Majola Tea Factory. Majola is on the side of the Port St. John's municipality, and Magwa is on the side of the Musa Hill municipality. Uh, but we want to combine all that because they are run under one body, uh, but we want to diversify it into tourism and also ensure that there are other uh, high-value crops that we are, uh, we are proposing uh, to ensure the profitability of that enterprise. And uh, it is now linked, uh, uh, it's going to be linked to those high value crops, uh, to the, uh, the ecotourism uh, investment in terms of the property and the investment in terms of the renewable energy, as well as uh, issues relating to the cannabis uh, production, um, uh, uh, given the potential yeah, cannabis uh, in the whole of the Poland area. So we also want to link that development uh, to those uh, developments. Um, um, uh, this is just the, the way they are located. I don't want to overgraze, but if you look at this, this is Majola, which is on the other side of under Port St. John's municipality. And this one is on the Musa side. But there is a river here uh, that has got Magwa Falls. Those Magwa Falls, we are proposing as part of this to have the viewing deck made of glass. Uh, so in the artistic impression, we have that and the hotel on the other side of the river and chalets on the other side of the river. And that's where we would like to uh, uh, attract uh, investors in that area uh, that has got such a, a potential. These are the, are the, are the are the key areas, Magua, Tea Estate, the tourism part, and the new high value crops. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. This is the glass uh, deck. You can view the falls directly. And uh, down here, there is a, there's going to be a lift that runs about 144 meters down. It's also made of glass. And there are also going to be some steps that go down and footpaths down there. And on the other side is going to be a hotel. On the other side is going to be chalets. So that's how we have uh, structured this Magua, uh, Majola, Enka uh, um, a value chain. The Mkambati main uh, a camp development is also in Moza towards the coastline. There's a, there's a game reserve there uh, with, a, I think, a three-star hotel. But we still need more uh, investments in terms of promoting the campsite uh, to a level maybe of a three-star uh, that's what we are proposing uh, uh, here. Um, this is the Mkambati Nature Reserve, how big it is. And these are the, this is the area that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, the cable car, we are proposing it for Port St. John's. Feasibility study is complete. Uh, we just need to work uh, on other critical documentation. Uh, there are two, two uh, mountains on both sides, we just want to join these two. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a mesmerizing uh, 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 scenario that, that, uh, that, that is there, where we want to locate this, this cable car. 
Uh, then the Slaka restaurant and conference center is also in, uh, uh, in one of the nature reserves around the Port St. John's, uh, where we want to put up uh, the, the conference center. Uh, the previous disability study has been completed uh, already, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's another opportunity. The Umtata North uh, uh, corridor development in Umtata is uh, congested. We want to open up Umtata on the northern part. Uh, given that uh, the other parts uh, we have been having a, a, a land invasion and it's very difficult to develop Mtata further. And that uh, uh, Mtata North area is the only potential where we want to put up uh, uh, the, especially the industrial retail and uh, commercial uh, 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 activities. And then Lusikisiki want to do the, 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 the same uh, given the congestion that you see in the town. We are working on the revitalization of that town now, and, and, uh, but also to decongest it by putting it development elsewhere, uh, which will also be focusing on retail, hotel, offices, civic centers, and as well as the educational facilities. Um, the business side, uh, uh, this is the uh, same thing uh, that I've spoken to. The small harbor in Port St. John's, um, uh, I've spoken to this one. Department of Public Works is working on this um, uh, at a national level, but also at a provincial level. There is an intention also to complement that work uh, by putting the precinct, especially for the offices of government, in Port St. John's. So that's another investment that is going to be coming from the side of the provincial Department of Public Works uh, to put those offices there. Uh, the second beach development is another no dull point in Port St. John's. This is the most popular spot uh, during summer, uh, Second Beach, but it's the one that has been confronted with the, the shark attacks sometimes, hence uh, the proposal to have uh, this tidal uh, a pool as part of, of that uh, to mitigate against that, uh, that, that challenge. Uh, we also have a waterfront that we're proposing, especially around um, uh, there's already a, a hotel, the beautiful uh, hotel that is fully booked throughout the year. Uh, so it's an, uh, a first beach, and that's where we want to locate uh, the, the waterfront around uh, Port St. John's. Um, this is another municipality, uh, another area that has got uh, a beautiful scenery. Uh, we don't have any conference centers. They must move from Shonto to Mtata or from Mtata to here uh, for their activities uh, in that municipality. Whereas if we can have uh, investments that we can put on conference centers in this beautiful area, uh, we can see uh, a lot of benefit out of that. So we, they have identified that area as a uh, point of development. In Meleni Shopping Center, as well as Libor the Shopping Center, is uh, Nyandeni Municipality. But these are small towns that, we have, uh, that have been neglected in the past. The Office of the Premier has uh, been embarking uh, on small town revitalization, I think we have spent more than 120 million in Libord, and already uh, we have sparked uh, uh, the interest of the investors to put their malls there. Same applies to Meleni, who is, 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 is the same. So this is talking to the shopping centers now that we want to put up there to liven up those people so that they don't have to go to Mtata and uh, contribute towards that congestion uh, in the Mtata area. Uh, this one, I've spoken to this. This is the broader uh, uh, strategy, say agro-industrialization, which is going to be located around the SEZ, uh, the Wild Coast SEZ in Umtata. This one is the Nelson Mandela Cultural Precinct. This is going to be uh, linked to the current uh, Nelson Mandela um, uh, Museum. But we want to do a cultural precinct uh, by taking a portion of that old that, uh, Mtata High School and maybe relocate Mtata High School to another area and take the whole of that block as that cultural precinct and connect all that uh, to a number of other initiatives, your National Heritage Liberation Route and all that that has been led by uh, the, the, the National Heritage Council. The Mtata West uh, property development is also in KSD. It's focusing on uh, residential areas, also the hotels. Uh, the, the two hotels there, Garden Court and, uh, and, uh, and Mayfair only, and they, they are always full uh, all the time. So we still need more 
So they have identified a piece of land on the western part uh, for, that, uh, for that development. Hole in the wall, uh, I'm about to finish, is in closer to Coffee Bay. Uh, there's a hotel that is proposed there uh, to ensure that this is hole in the wall and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Coffee Bay. They are just, I think, 15 kilometers apart. So it's also going to ensure the, the unleashing of the tourism potential in that, uh, in that area. The Wild Coast uh, 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 waterfront, that one is proposed by this municipality to be located around this place. And already the owners of this uh, Wild Coast are very interested to support uh, uh, that, that initiative to have a waterfront as well here. And then that will contribute towards the development towards the site and the, towards the bridge to connect this part with the port at uh, that side of the, of, the, of, the, of the river. On renewable energy, I've spoken to this, uh, that uh, the target is with Mandela, Mandela municipality as well as the renewable energy, especially around uh, uh, Matatia. But the only snag here is this issue of that land tenure uh, a problem that still needs to be sorted out in areas uh, where there is a, 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 a communal ownership of land. Uh, the, the, that one is the, the airstrip, that site, and in Tabankulu precinct, uh, Luteke Dam, here we're proposing uh, the recreational activities and, and, and facilities. Um, uh, uh, it's already there, it has been built, it's full, it just needs reticulation to, it's, that pro process has already started, but we are talking about how we can better utilize that Luteke Dam for recreational purposes, for conference centers, and all that. So and followed by the Ugu uh, Business uh, Chamber, and then the Herigwala Business Chamber. On the World Coast, I understand we have integrated ourselves, uh, Port Alfred, and uh, uh, so sorry, the, the, what is this? The Alfred in Zoo and the World Coast uh, integrating themselves. So when you speak, you'll be speaking as one. And then after the Herigwala, then we'll have the investor representatives, the number of investors that are here will also say a few words in either appreciating or even pledging. Uh, I'm not sure what, what is it that is expected of you. So are you ready? Let's start with the World Coast. Are they here? Thank you. Program Director or Facilitator DM Tikashele Kukum Kanye to Zanuzuk Uma Mawe to U Minister and Yakumulba is from the Silva Agal Tandil Kamalga Gongoshu, Colorado Gam Parties with Deputy Ministers. Or MSC be to Abakon Abba, MSC Nata, MSC Shomoga, no Babura Vipile, the teachers, the teachers, HOTs, the municipal managers, mayors, traditional councils, in courses as well as to the investors, the business communities, ladies and gentlemen, Molweni. Uh, I'm standing here, my name is Ayanda Nochelega. I'm from the Wild Coast uh, Business Chamber. We are not going to do any slides presentations. We would like to be very short. Sitting too much in meetings, we believe our purpose is to be out there in bu doing business. Uh, we are not going to really take much time. Today's presentation uh, from our side is just a word of support and maybe some few uh, advices and observation from where we are doing business because we are doing business in these four districts.
to us as business chambers, this is a continuation. We are not sitting here for the first time. We have sat as the four districts uh, with the Department uh, of uh, uh, COCTA uh, discussing the issues around the smart city development. Uh, we got members from uh, Ugu, uh, Ubaba U Nganesia, but I'm sure they are going to say something. And uh, also from uh, Oar Tambo, Alfredo, and uh, Herikwal. Uh, as business, the opportunity uh, presented today, or the initiative by our government, we believe that it's a a, 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 we can call it a, an overview type of a development because the areas that are identified today, we all know the history that these areas were completely ring fenced uh, for non development. Hence, if you are in Pondoland, when you will never even identify a piece of uh, a rail or any form of an ocean activity. Literally, the area has been sidelined. We really appreciate that our government, after 30 years, you realize the damage that has been, uh, 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 that happened in this region. Unfortunately, even doing business in such a region, regions is very difficult. As business, we, we have said and uh, we have uh, given advices, we have come up with proposals, some are on record in our meetings that we have had with the department. Uh, having experienced working with government and as business, we do realize that there are gaps that need to be looked at going forward to fast track this type of development. Uh, the very first uh, issue that we need not to be shy about it is the manner in which the area has been portrayed in the media, uh, even in the other areas. Uh, there is a understanding as if you are in this region, you are in a region where people do not like development, do not support development, uh, you are in a space where people are violent. It is unfortunate that what we get in the media versus what is happening on the ground are two different stories. As this area, especially the Alfreds or, or Winnie Matigizela Mandela, we got, I can say, an egg in our face of a project that was stopped, a 1.6 billion rands worth of a bridge of Mtintu. And what you read in newspapers, it's a record that says people from Pondoland do not like, they don't want development, they stop development. I'm happy that uh, we Ms. Ngate was here. We sat in one meeting where we were sitting in a meeting and some people came in this environment with guns, they switch off electricity, we had to run around. That's the type of uh, environment that we find ourselves in. But when you start investigating where are those people are coming from, they were not from the region. I'm saying this because we got investors here, which we need to engage as business and give support where is required. The other record that you have is the mining at Tolubini that has been delayed for almost two decades. But uh, I'm narrating these stories because we would like as business, especially from these four districts, to indicate to government our commitment and our support for development. The story that happened at Mtendu, I would like to take my time today, MC Ngata and MC Pile, to share with you. It is incorrect uh, to think that the whole project was completely stopped by violence. When our government identified that big companies, the so-called big five construction companies were colluding, there was a decision of punishing for collusion. But they took a lot of government work while they were into financial crisis 
and they find some projects to be used in a scapegoat. I want this to, to share it openly because it is important for this type of development. If you can go on record today what happened to Greenacre who was part of that joint venture, they were having financial problems. There was a strike, people, they were not happy, but the issue was resolved by our leadership before the 90 days time, but they carried on running away from site. Today, that project, it is clear they have underpriced the project. That is why we find ourselves in that situation. There has been so many strikes in other regions where projects will be stopped because people are not happy, there will be engagement. But we need to say this, uh, 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 Minister, so that we assure our people that uh, this area is ready for development. But at times we find ourselves because our people are not exposed in a number of other contractual requirements. The contractor that was doing the Mtendu Bridge had financial problems. Hence, even today, they have gone for liquidation. If someone wants to contest that, as business, we are ready to take that through. Because we do not want what is being painted about our region. The same issue of Tolubeni mining. People in this region, we want that project. We can't have our fathers, our forefathers, and our brothers dying in Johannesburg for mining while we have an opportunity at our backyard to do business. But you get involved. Is there anyone in Bizana, a community of that, a member of community of that area, who can afford, pay all the advocates, high, court, high, high level uh, uh, legal people fighting against development? Get involved and see who is involved. It's the same people that has ring-fenced development outside our area. I wish, uh, Minister, during December holidays, you can stay in this region as a All those big guys that in Johannesburg driving four by fours, come holiday, they want to come here, explore their four by fours, because these types of roads and poor infrastructure that we have is not there in Johannesburg to explore their toys. That's what we're going through. They've got cottages along the sea, which we want government to address that because we don't even know how have they accessed that piece of land. We as business, we are very clear, this is a very good model, but this model needs a lot of work from the communities, from the business, even setting government decisions. Other issues, uh, uh, Minister, that we want to raise is the issue of access to land. This is a very good uh, presentation, but as a citizen or as someone who stays in this region, especially Pondoland, former Transkai, your Bizana, Flexa, Flusigindabangul area, I'm asking myself one question. How ready are we in terms of land availability? Because investment of this magnitude or development of this magnitude requires land available for that. If you have noticed, as you have indicated, a lot of land here is communal land, state land. There is very little private land in this area. The process as a business person that you need to follow to have a proper land tenure on a piece of land, one hectare, it can take you a good five years. We need to deal with that because the process says you need to have a community resolution, which is very good. You need to have a buy-in uh, uh, of the department. It goes as far as having a lease having to be signed by the national minister. Would you really need a national minister to come and sign for a one hectare piece of land to establish up a swimming pool? These are the issues that we are raising to say we need policy. For example, we do compare business. In KZN, you've got around issues of Ngonyama Trust, which at times seems to be faster. You come to the Eastern Cape, state land, the process goes to the province, you try and find officials there for decision making, 
it takes forever, it goes to Pretoria, it takes forever. We are saying this is one issue that needs to be looked at because it's going to delay even investors that wants to come into this region. The other issue around land that we need to raise is around traditional leadership. There is a serious land grabbing activity that is taking place along the Wild Coast area or exactly where we are talking about the, the seaboard uh, development. Something has to be done agently. As I'm saying, the big companies or the big guys, players who are owning 4 by 4s they spend time here on cottages. Those cottages, you do not understand even how do they get access. We as locals, we cannot have access to those pieces of land along the sea. But they go as far as now having houses built next to a rondavel. That owner is now safeguarding this rondavel and it's a, it's a real embarrassment and takeover of land in a very terrible way that affects our people. But we think this can be addressed if there can be correlation between traditional leadership. Because as we are doing presentation now, Sandra, for example, is doing the N2. That N2 already, Sandra is spending money in relocating houses, which originally there were no houses. A case is clear in KST. Sandral cannot develop some of the roads that are supposed to be developed there because they are buildings on road reserves and everything else. Something agent has to be done. Otherwise, we will find ourselves planning in these boardrooms about pieces of land that we think is available. You get on the ground, there is no land. If you want to carry on, you need to relocate people. This is a serious issue between maybe government and, and the traditional leadership that needs to be addressed. In our engagement with the local uh, government, uh, with the leadership from COCTA, we have uh, indicated four major things that we are proposing. The first issue is the issue of consultation. We, 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 we understand in these areas where you are going to be talking about the smart city development, you will find that 80% of the community that reside in that area have never been into, even to Deben. Now, when you come up with this big development, you will start talking about billions investment and all that. That brings confusion. There is a lot of consultation and community awareness that is required for us to have this development taking off. We are calling for an agent community consultation at all levels to make sure that the communities understand that when we are talking about a, a harbor, when you are talking about a, an airport, what it means to them, what it means to the future of their generations. The, the second issue is the issue of participation. We are appealing for a clear approach. The top-down approach is the one that makes things fall apart. Allow communities to participate. For example, we would like to propose that uh, when there is a development identified in the area, the land is communal. Can't land be used also as a form of equity towards partnership? Because if you come in as an investor in that specific area, people own portion of that development. We don't believe that there can be vandalism. There can be any challenge because people know that any form of income there, we are the beneficiaries of that income. The third issue is the meaningful beneficiation. Meaningful beneficiation, we have observed, is happening, uh, Minister, in our towns, small towns. Before 1994, 90% of Pizana was owned by black African people. You go there today, it's, it's an embarrassment. It's terrible. All comes in, goes out in bags and everything. I'm happy that today there's a combination between KZN and Eastern Cape. The Cockstad growth that they are talking about, 
is the growth that affects your Mount Elif and Dabangulu area because people are residing outside the province. And this is exactly where this integration as business, we see it taking place, that what opportunities are on the other side and what opportunities are on the other side. This is really a serious issue that we need to look at because even those the growth that you find in Kokstad is ownership. What is happening? In Uku, we are... Sitengi presentation yetu tuizo bayotwa. Sienza ngokilanga nyela. Ugo ze skuazu kuti skulume as a business. Yala mare, yala ma district. Uh, uh, for. But for me, kifunubiza bongo so ma business. Iga kuluga za mafora mze inda wenza sema kaya. Na sema tolope na mangane. Age skulume ngazulinya. Si supportele initiative. I guess I may actually a project as a developer because um, I sense in general, I'm a project in our ascend when the summer car as soon as we fit in and say to oh mama be to or sister be to a baggy to a back on is in the way. I guess I'm a protector in the house to my project. I let work team Tina as a business sector. See for another project. It could be a party. You are here to as a business. Who could not have pulled them up or Ukulunya ka kulunga lezi zindu. Abe maathle ama presentation abe nji. But when it comes to implementation, that is a problem. So I think even next year, you will find the same. Even after five years, you will find the same. But when you go to the ground, ukubukukuti wenzwe na ikinde yenzi yu. Sitka nukuti kumishi iswe indo ya mapotrum. Go to the ground, implement. Then you will never have any complaint from us. But as a business, for us, it's just for the implementation, not to sit in the meetings like this or conferences. Thank you very much. Then thank you very much. Uh, those who are sitting next to you will do the interpretations. We didn't get an interpreter. <laughs> uh, but was just making a call. Uh, on other forums that are established across the country in communities, wherever they are, that let's come together and speak as one. And those business forums to professionalize themselves as businesses, not as people who stop projects. And if you can get to them and really plead to them that development ought to be released and be allowed to happen, and professionalize yourself, register yourself proper, comply, with the law so that we could all then have this big cake that we can share, and but also see development happening. And saying to government, please, please, boardrooms should be less. These boardroom meetings, let's see action and implementation, implementation and implementation. So after five years, 10 years, 15, we see a difference, unlike in the past, where we had made so many decisions and nothing happened. So those just in, in brief, well, and they support the, the presentation as presented by the Wild Coast because it represented all other uh, business chambers uh, in, the, in the four districts.
Eric Wallach, do you still want to say something or you are also covered? They are covered. Okay, so Harry Guala is ribbons. He states with PGA accredited golf course. The reason for this is to get international accreditation. Uh, we've got backing from the Sunshine Tour already. This is to get ecotourism going in the area, in industrial zones, integrated housing development. Also, uh, a King Faku Mall, which is important, right close to the N2 highway. Uh, and then schools and hospitals, smart city development, and then of course solar and, and hydrogen plant. This is important for us, that it's all green energy, and the city will be self-sustainable from water to energy. Just, just in short, the project summary, Kalem Financial Services will spare the initiative in partnership with Amapondo Kingship, the community, and I just must mention that the land that will be utilized will be turned into equity for the community as well as the kingdom. The other important thing is we've got leading international and local JSC listed companies. International companies that form part of the partnership are SGH2 Energy. They're investing over a billion rand into the hydrogen side to ensure that this forms as a catalyst for the improvement of the area and job creation. Further, we've got Grupo Cobra, uh, one of the largest EPC companies in the world, Hitachi, Health Fox, and Beacon. Local companies that form part of the partnerships, and only but just to mention a few, the Ruinet Group, which is also a listed company, Co-Create, Sun International, NHC, Njolo Capital, Krebus, down Touch Investments, Southern African PGA Tour, Tela Toile, DMB Holdings, and then, last but not least, the community. Funding has been arranged through several local first-tier banks, leading pension funds in South Africa, as well as equity partners, as I said, such as HGH2 Energy, Grupo Cobra, Greenex Capital, Nahawo Investment Holdings, and the Renet Group. Sorry, there's a... Just to quickly touch on the, on the budget, and this will be quick. So on the infrastructure development, and I'm quite happy to share this presentation with anyone, we're putting in 7.1 billion rand. On the hydrogen plant, we're putting in 1.4 billion rand. On health services, for phase one, we're putting in 350 million rand. And that would include, as you can see, community equity as well as ensuring that we have clinics right through into the various villages around the smart city. And this also includes smart health services. Solar plant and storage, 240 million. Agriculture and rural development, 2.1 billion. And then we also have the Internet of Things. This is in to ensure that everyone has connectivity, that the smart solutions that we are doing can be done. And there we're spending 600 million. We, on the eco-tourism side, we're looking at 1.1 billion. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on each specific uh, uh, leg of the project. However, I must tell you, I'm happy to share it, and you can go through it in your own time. And as I said before, we're looking at further investment. We have, uh, so far, we've raised 16 billion. We're not trying to raise it. We've raised it already. We have our partners. We have the plans put together. We've done the feasibilities and bankable studies on it. The second phase that we're busy with is trying to raise a further amount. And that further amount then would include a high-speed rail along the coastline powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology train. So in the end, you won't need electricity. I think that's important on the rail itself. And then, of course, all the other developments along the coast. Just to touch on the smart agriculture, as you can see, we've put a lot of funding into the agriculture uh, part of our smart city. We use an anchor farm, and I don't think this is something new which will be the catalyst for the development of the number of commercially viable feeder farms 
So that's the community and community farming and agribusiness and beneficiation plants in the surrounding communities, communal land. So we're not looking at taking huge areas of agriculture, but we partner with the community and they form part of our solution. Following this integrated development approach, the development of the anchor farm will initiate community development and the enhancement of the livelihoods of all community members to whom the land in the end belongs. Let me sing out how score it. You have scored an investment of 16 billion rand. <laughs> a round of applause for Eastern Cape. And uh, any other investors that are present? Okay, come. Let's hear which other district is going to. But the, the both district in KZN and in Eastern Cape have scored on the 16, 16 billion rand because of the biomass, the agricultural waste, and then the municipality waste, all of it is no longer going to be thrown around now. It's going to go into the hydrogen. So both provinces and the four districts, we are the big scorers on this one. Thank you. Is consulting person for the CN energies. CNG, yeah, so you'll just say your name because I don't want to mispronounce it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, program director, Minister, Minister Dlamini Zunu, Zuma, uh, MECs, deputy MECs, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Colin Raman. I'm a consulting engineer, not quite the investor yet, but I am representing the investor, which is C Energies, uh, who are looking at two major developments in the Ugu district, district municipality, being the oil refinery and a, and a steel mini mill. I'll go to the, that in a bit more detail. Sorry. Okay, I've also got alongside me here, Mr. Pindani, Nene. Pindani, you, are we doing this as a, as a duet? <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing, but. <laughs> Now they, they've asked me to come and join you so that I introduce properly. Okay, can you introduce yourself then? I'll, then I'll continue. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me greet everyone, especially our Honorable Minister. Uh, unfortunately for me, I've adopted uh, Minister Zamini Zuma as my mother. Uh, I don't use, I don't like to use the name minister. It doesn't go down well to me. Uh, I'm that kind of a person. Basically, uh, my name is Pindani Nene from Umbumbulu, if you want to say Deben. But um, I've come up with a concept of inviting investors across the globe to make sure that this area that we are referring to, the four districts that we are talking about, uh, benefit practically instead of theorizing because some of the things that we are talking about, they were part of the speeches in 1994 and up to this point nothing has happened. And secondly, I've developed quite a number of areas, but what we want to request today from the board at all levels of government, the only request we have is to fast track the processes. I'll give you one example and then you'll see where we are. In 2015, I led the acquisition of land at Ilovo for the development of Motor Hub, 2015. Up to this point, nothing has happened. And when I approached the relevant department because I was coming with an investor that was ready to invest 40 billion, 
They said they are not ready, they will be ready in 2025-2026. That is where we are as a country. We keep on chasing the investors away. But here I want to introduce the chairman and the CEO of Sea Energies, Mr. Abu Baka, uh, who has also committed billions of dollars to the project of oil refinery and steel mill. So all we are looking for now is about uh, fast-tracking the processes. Because if the processes are fast-tracked in the next three, four months, people in this area will be enjoying jobs. If we can stop theorizing and stop greediness, because greed is leading in this country. Anything that you try and establish that talks about creating jobs and assisting people on the ground is not needed because people start up by saying, what is in for me? That is the critical thing we are experiencing in this country. So I would like to thank Umama Wamla for bringing all the MECs and the SOTs and the GGs. Because the whole idea here is to fast track the processes without talking about what is in for me. We need to think about creating jobs for our communities. Not corruption, not anything of that nature. We need to say, here is an investment, they are ready to start in three or four months, not this thing of feasibility studies, which is a hell of a corruption. They talk about feasibility studies, and they put 100 or 200 million to it, which will carry on. Every year they are thinking of that 200 million that they are doing. Whilst general public and people on the ground are suffering. So my request, is that from today onwards, let's change this country. Let's change corruption. Let's focus on the practical side of business. So I, for today, I'll introduce Sea Energies, but I'll also introduce the lady that is representing Tyler Perry, because we would like to establish and develop the film city here in this area. And what I've raised in the past 12 months is almost 1.3 trillion. But we need to start. Two standards, or you know, five and six standards. As you can see on the right-hand side, the, uh, the refinery will be able to, uh, to produce LPG, chemicals, Kerosene used for jet fuels, diesel, fuels used for ship, bitumen that we all need badly in our rose industry, and other products such as lubricating oils, waxes, and polishes. Just to go back to why we need to sustain what we've got, the South African market actually, uh, the current crude oil processing plants are defining a capacity of 704,000 barrels per day. That's split between, as you can see there on the left-hand side, SAPREF, SASOL, Engine, NATREF, Chevron, and Petro SA. And the map shows you how spread out they are in the country. But the future doesn't look good for them as a refinery because there's a shift to cleaner fuels to get to Euro 5 and Euro 6 standards. And this has been brought forward about 70 k away from the multi-products pipeline. And the intention is to is to mirror what uh, is being done at SAPREF and Engine at the moment, where they've got a boy, a calm boy out at sea, probably about five kilo, uh, kilometers offshore, two to five kilometers offshore, from where crude oil is uh, pumped into the refinery site. So that's what we're looking at there as well. And, and that's a layout, the footprint of the refinery. It's quite a big refinery. It's gonna be at least two kilometers long by about one kilometer wide. It's a bit more detail there about the uh, extraction structure, being the SPM boy. 
at a distance of approximately four kilometers from the shore and, and the pipelines that will go in. There's also the possibility that fuel might be exported, so there could be a return pipeline as well, depending on, this, on the South African demand. As I said, we chose this particular site because it's, it's the closest we can get within Ugu to the multi-products pipeline, but it does mean building another multi-products pipeline, which will be about 70 kilometer long. We're hoping to get approval from Sandrail and someone to use the road reserve, or if not, we'll have to look at another servitude. But with engine and... Still wanna say something, another investor. Okay. <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, basically, I would like to introduce because uh, there are some investors who have traveled all the way from the US, from Canada, from England. Uh, coming specifically to introduce themselves here. We also have our own local uh, companies that are ready to be part of this uh, seaboard. Uh, all I need to do is to introduce them. But maybe we'll give one or two the opportunity. If you look at the film city, it will introduce a lot of, of things. But without wasting time, uh, we also have uh, another nene here who will introduce, I mean, who will get and, and put up storage facility at 97 million. Uh, and, and that is what we are getting here. When you look at the total of investment, they come to plus or minus 1.2 trillion and that is what we are. But I'll introduce the lady now, just for one minute, uh, in order to, to talk about the film seat. Okay. All right. No, no. As I said, we are trading on a dangerous uh, time uh, space. Uh, Dreams and the rural environments of the diamonds in the rough in our nation that has never, ever been touched. We travel throughout this nation, bringing international education and opportunities to so many cities that are already developed. But the rough diamonds that I have been exposed to in my childhood and as a teenager growing up as a caravan park kid whose dad was a construction worker, I need to highlight the importance of bringing a film city into the Eastern Cape as well as KZN because the level of potential that I was exposed to growing up in these two provinces is absolutely unstoppable, but we don't have the resources or the educational training systems implemented to be able to bring Hollywood, Netflix to this actual project. Johannesburg, Cape Town is the known name internationally and globally for the film industry. The film city at the East Board will be ultimate and brings about a brand new opportunity for the community and the rural area for the kids with the low mindsets of being raised rural. Now you need creations throughout the film city in the Eastern Sea Board development. I thank you. Thank you very much for, for the three practical uh, Kickstarters, uh, Minister to, to the Eastern, Eastern Board uh, uh, Development. You have the Calcium uh, Consortium that had already told us about the hydrogen and many other activities. We have also listened to Sea Energies also on the oil refinery and uh, minimal steel uh, investment that are almost ready. They are just going through paper applications and zoning issues and also the environmental assessment. 
and then the figures has been pronounced, and also now this work of the film city, uh, which, uh, madam, you will then also begin to work on it and make it a reality. You have really punctuated on the importance of the scenario and what you see, but also picking up on the rough diamonds and ensuring that the young people are the biggest beneficiary. Uh, in addition to the 17 million uh, uh, US dollars that we are already using to uplift education amongst the young children in South Africa across the landscape. It's not just only in the seaboard. I know I saw one on television last week, two weeks ago, who is going to the US on a scholarship. Uh, and then his, the family was so excited that they thought the child will never go to US uh, at any given stage. So continue with the good work. We are also going to package you as part of the announcements today. Minister, I will cancel the discussions. I think the business uh, 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 chambers of commerce in the four districts have already engaged on quite issues for, en for further engagement, for further solutions, for further uh, resolution with government. And then also they've called for... Uh, from here, uh, Port Edward until Port St. John, uh, if that route can also be attended to. They have already engaged on the issues of the, 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 the disruptive elements uh, in the development and business as a, as a whole. Uh, that government, if you could then begin to re reach out to all so that we do not disrupt uh, development or business growth uh, across. They have already <coughs> called on uh, collaboration as business chambers, which is a very good model that we want, and, and so that we, we could speak as one. And investors, I think, uh, they, they did indicate some of the challenges, but they say there are solutions. They did not just paint a picture of challenges, uh, so that even when you are there, you know that there are people who will give solutions to those particular challenges. So, therefore, your investment is most welcome, and, uh, and it, it really gives us something to say uh, now and also in tomorrow when the president arrives, so, so that you could then begin to pronounce on some of those kickstarters in the uh, Eastern Cape and also in KwaZulu-Natal, in the four districts as uh, the beneficiaries of where activity is going to be. And that's a very big and fancy word, but it's actually talking to the detail of, uh, who was it, from the Wild Coast Chamber, who articulated that community consultation, participation, sense of ownership. Without being unrealistic, I think no investor is going to put their money in if they're not sure it's safe or they're not going to get a reasonable return, and we are mature enough to understand that. But from where we come from as South Africa, we want to see transformation, real sustainable transformation, and therefore that social compact becomes important. That's why it is so important that you spoke as frankly as you did to say these are our issues, let's work together in a frank and honest way, understanding each other's uh, issues, and we are more likely to come up with a sustainable, uh, sustainable solution. So thank you to the organized business for bringing that frank perspective to the discussion, and of course the individual, other individual business people. I can't imagine what kind of nerves of steel it might take, it must take to make a is it a $16 billion decision, investment decision, and uh, to say that you're going to make a decision that's going to be sensible, that that investor or those groups of investors, I mean, you're working, I think somebody said, with the pension funds. I won't sleep easily at night if I'm knowing that I'm responsible for the welfare of workers' pension funds. So that's a great responsibility that the investment community has. And we are pleased that from the background of that kind of responsibility, you're identifying this smart city on the eastern seaboard with the potential that you think it has. The same too with the oil refinery and Mr. Owe Baker. Well, I'm, your hair is still a long way to go before it reaches the Kamai color. Uh, but I'm pleased that you are in the position to make that kind of decision. And uh, we would encourage you. But let me be quite frank. We want to defeat corruption. There's without any mercy, no compromise. But we can't compromise on proper planning. I told you that I'm from here, from Ugu. 
I don't want my children or grandchildren to look when I'm dead and gone to say we made stupid decisions that were not in their interests. So let's act with integrity within the legal framework that we have and come up with sustainable solutions. So this, I was going to say much more, but I think we're at the tail end of this program today. And if we are going to do half of what we say we're going to do, I think we're going to meet on a hundred times more, many more occasions, and that will be the time to say that. So thank you for everyone. Again, starting with our national government led by our minister, the provincial governments of both provinces, Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal, the local government authorities, and of course the investors. I hope you're going to inspire many other investors to say, here's the serious decisions being, uh, being made, and they would like to uh, add value to all the supplementary opportunities that are going to be there. Thank you very much, and I hope we'll see you tomorrow. I'm not sure what the invite list is like, uh, so let me not uh, invite you. I'm sure the correct protocol will be followed as far as the invitation is concerned. But the fact that the president is coming tomorrow to add his weight and his voice to this particular initiative, I think there can't be better evidence than that, that this is a serious effort which we want to succeed. Thank you for listening. May God bless each and every one of you. Uh, honorable players already announced about tomorrow, but the announcement is that by 11 o'clock, all of you who are accredited, uh, we had gone through the accreditation, and then we have it on you. Uh, you will be in the UGU, uh, the sports uh, grounds. That's where the activity is. Please be seated uh, before 11 o'clock. We should not be arriving at 11 because the president will be arriving at the round time. Just be seated from half past 10, if all of you, so that we can then go through protocols and accreditation, verification, and then all those things. The second announcement is that the, there will be a small delegation of the investors and the Chamber of Commerce that are here to have a, a chat brief meeting with the president in the morning. Uh, and we are saying Ugu, not more than two people, Chamber of Commerce, Alfred and Zoe, not more than two people, so that the rest of the other delegations will advance, except the two people will be remaining here. Uh, Wild Coast uh, Chamber of Commerce, two people, not more than that. And then the South Coast also, two people, not more than that. And then the rest of your other delegates will go there. And the investors, uh, if you are a group, uh, we'll also see two to three people in the group for the investors that are here. Uh, and particularly those who have already pledged in particular uh, to say, please, uh, then be part of that small delegation that will then have a, a brief chat with the president in the morning. He will start with the king, uh, the two kings of the area, and, uh, and, and then at that point there will be an area where you'll be waiting and then you will come and greet and then appreciate and welcome you. But you must be ready then to follow as we depart to, 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 to the Ugu Sports Grounds. Also be there because you'll be talking more uh, that side in the program where you'll be again pledged, but make it short to the point uh, so that you summarize is a bigger audience than this one. So we'll be giving you just a few minutes to then say what is it that we are going to do and the, the investment figure and then that's it. So Minister, with that then we are coming to the end of the meeting and uh, we will then play that uh, video that they could not see earlier. It's not a long one and then that will signal the end. Once it ends, everybody knows that the meeting is now adjourned. Can you play it? Thank you. <laughs> 